I'd like to welcome Dr. Michael Kasten, Director of the Comprehensive Cancer Center at St. Jude's Children's Research Hospital. He's also Director of the Molecular Therapeutics Division and Professor in the Department of Oncology at St. Jude. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. It's wonderful to be here. You helped establish the role of the P53 tumor suppressor in DNA damage responses and elucidate the mechanism of activation of the ATM protein kinase. Would you describe how you are using these insights to develop new therapies? DNA damage responses are critically important in many aspects of cancer biology. We know that DNA damage causes cancer, so understanding how cells respond to DNA damage, whether it's caused by exposure to things in the environment like ultraviolet light or other types of radiation or chemicals is an important part of understanding how cancers form. And in addition, our DNA is frequently damaged by our own metabolism, uh, oxidative stress that uh, is constantly damaging the DNA. So we study these pathways to understand how cancers form, but the flip side is that we also use DNA damaging agents to treat cancer. So radiation therapy kills cells by damaging DNA, and many of our chemotherapeutic agents uh, kill cells by damaging DNA. So not only does DNA damage cause cancer, but we also use it to treat cancer. So for decades, uh, this has been an intensely interesting area for the cancer research community to study, to understand both cancer causation and improve ways to treat. And my laboratory has been studying these pathways for over 20 years. And we were fortunate enough to make the discovery um, about 18 years ago that the very commonly mutated gene in human cancer, P53, is a protein that plays a critical role in helping cells respond to DNA damage. In addition, several years later, we found that a gene product called ATM is also involved in these signaling pathways, and in fact, talks to P53 in helping cells respond to damage. So we've continued to study the cellular and molecular basis for how these gene products help cells respond to DNA damage. And now we've gotten to the point where we can start thinking about developing drugs that will uh, attack both P53 and ATM or other steps in the pathway that can be used in two ways. One, theoretically, it could be used for cancer prevention. Now, that's a much tougher uh, approach to, to try to attack, but we can also use them to enhance the killing of tumor cells in response to therapy, radiation therapy or chemotherapy. So that's one active area of investigation in the laboratory now is we're developing molecules that inhibit the ATM protein kinase. And when we do that, it makes cells very, very sensitive to ionizing radiation, to radiation therapy. And so we're, we're in the process of developing these drugs so that we can use them in patients so that when they get their radiation therapy, their tumors will be uh, more responsive. We're also trying to develop approaches to inhibit the P53 protein because if we can prevent the induction of P53 after DNA damage during chemotherapy or radiation therapy or if someone is accidentally exposed to radiation or uh, other types of damaging agents, then we can protect normal tissues. So in fact, we've recently made a discovery of a new mechanism involved in the induction of P53 and we're developing approaches to attack that process so that we can protect normal tissues to prevent the bone marrow suppression, the, the infection risk, the nausea and vomiting, and the hair loss, and some of the uh, side effects of chemotherapy and radiation therapy. As editor-in-chief of the AACR journal Molecular Cancer Research, what do you see on the horizon in the field of molecular controls of cellular responses to DNA damage? Well, as I said, this is a field that we've long recognized is important, an important process for under, us to understand in cancer biology, both in terms of tumor development and tumor responses to therapy. The journal Molecular Cancer Research focuses on understanding the cellular and molecular biology of cancer, and one of the main areas that we focus on in the journal are these DNA damage responses or stress responses. So, in the journal, we get many submissions in, in this field, and we have very high standards for what we publish, but uh, we're very interested in identifying new steps in the pathway that will help us understand both cancer development and ways to improve cancer therapies. 
You have chaired the AACR Special Conferences Committee since 2008. Would you elaborate on the directions the committee is taking and also how we can use the special conference format to foster young investigator participation and growth? So the Special Conferences Committee is a very important activity within the AACR. We organize a series of small to mid-sized conferences throughout the year on various topics that we think are very important in the field of cancer research. The goals are to bring investigators together in forums where they can discuss the latest findings and figure out ways to work together for improving understanding of cancer development and new approaches to therapy. And another important goal of these conferences is education. Not only education for established investigators, but also education for new investigators. So the AACR is very generous in providing travel awards uh, for trainees, both to the annual meeting as well as to these special conferences. And we've tried to provide within these conferences forums for the young investigators to not only learn the information from hearing the talks of the uh, senior investigators, but also uh, opportunities to meet with them in small groups, lunches, and one-on-one and -on -one so that, that they can not only learn the field better, but also get mentoring for their career development. Dr. Kasten, thank you so much. Thank you.